password again? Dreamland. Dreamland. I want to go to Dreamland. Hello everybody, my name is Ifo Alabi and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm actually going to talk about Ryan Murphy's Hollywood on Netflix. If you know Ryan Murphy, he did American Horror Story, American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, Pose, Scream Queens, you know, a whole host of other shows. And he was part of the creators that Netflix gave very nice, sweet, juicy deals to to produce content. And he's already done one television show with Netflix, that's The Politician, which premiered last year. And then this year he did Hollywood. The series follows a group of aspiring actors and filmmakers in post-World War II Hollywood as they try to make it in the movie industry no matter the cost. Each character offers a unique glimpse behind the gilded curtain of Hollywood's golden age, noting entrenched power, challenges to that power, and biases of many kinds that continue to this day. Now, let me just say, let me just talk about the good sides, like the great things I liked about the show, and I'll talk about the things I did not like about the show. First things first, the show is actually based on like certain real events and certain real people and certain real things that were actually around during the golden age of Hollywood. The first being the gas station. So Ernie's gas station is actually based on an actual gas station that's called the Richfield Oil and Gas Station, a place where you could go and have your sexual fantasies or sexual deviances, whatever it is that you found to be your kink, you could have it satisfied at this gas station so that part is true the first thing i like about it is that it's a beautiful setting like oh ryan murphy knows how to do period pieces very well like even when you watch pose the costumes the set pieces the like just the era just feels very warm and inviting and he does that so well in hollywood right from the first episode you just you're just invited to this era where you know the good old days even though there was a lot of racism and there was a lot of sexism but you know still the good old days and it felt very warm and inviting i like that so much about the show like right from the beginning i was like oh i want to wear a hat a fancy hat and have like gloves on have like my makeup done it was so fancy and i liked that so well another thing i liked about it was the characters like very diverse characters that's one thing that my ryan murphy also really likes using diverse characters but one thing i will say is that patty lupon she's a goddess okay like she shines so well through the show like from right from the beginning like at every point you could feel the changes with her and she's like one of those people that she just makes watching her electrifying you know even when like the actions around her were a bit too dull she was she was just so electrifying the show is seven episodes long and it's between 40 to 56 minutes per episode now for that it's great but i feel like there's so much story he wanted to tell and not enough time to tell it so at a point it felt like a sprint instead of a marathon in the middle of the series it felt like there was a rush to finish it the first episode set up the exposition very lovely the second episode it felt like you were okay growing to know who the characters were and by the fourth and fifth episode you're like wait what is happening how is everything moving so quickly you know because it was like there wasn't enough time for us to be absorbed in the journey it was like there was just a rush to get to the academy awards it was just so much that was missing that at the end when certain actions happened at the end it felt like we were rushed to the end like we didn't enjoy the journey to the end we just needed to get to the end and that's one thing i really didn't like about it and latifa who plays hattie mcdaniel was talking with camille washington who is also another black woman and they were like they had weekly meetings and we never saw those weekly meetings save for the one before the academy nominations and i was like why didn't he have a sense of what these weekly meetings were what were the conversations they had because all those things were what to make us further understand the characters i felt like there wasn't a lot of character exposition like i felt like if he had if he had given himself time for say 10 episodes to build up the story in 10 episodes it would have been so lovely and i and i think that's the problem that ryan murphy has had with his netflix show because this is the second one and he still had the same thing the same with the politician the politician was lovely the first three episodes and then just like it rushed through and we got to the end and we're like wait wait wait, wait. We, we missed so much exposition on these characters so that's one thing i didn't like about it and once you're talking about characters then the plot i understand that this show is a retelling you know let's make the golden era of hollywood better but you know you can't deny history and the history of hollywood isn't a kumbaya history okay we all know about the deep-rooted sexism in hollywood the racism in hollywood and this show tried to make it seem like by determination you overcome the racism and it's like we still hear stories 
in 2020. You know, because trying to say that gay characters could walk the red carpet and not just any red carpet, the Oscar red carpet. Are you kidding me? This show feels like a love letter to Hollywood, but it's not the right love letter to Hollywood. Yes, movies can change your life. Movies do change our lives. Movies have done so much for me, but to not acknowledge the past of what that industry is, is a great disservice to the people that have suffered through the industry, right? Because the plot revolves around making of this movie based on the life of, based on the tragic life of Peg and Whistle, who was crushed by the Hollywood system and jumped off the Hollywood sign. So that's, that movie they're trying to make is the backbone of what the story is. But they, they do change the end of, the, they change the movie from Peg to Meg and they make it a, a story of how you can overcome everything. But anybody that will come and tell me that, well, this is a fictional story, so you can't tell them what to do with a fictional story. I think that, yes, it's about the golden era of Hollywood, but also bring, pull back, pull all the way back the curtain on that golden era that, yes, we've had the beautiful pictures, we had the I, we had the award shows, we had all these things, but behind the scenes, it was so tough for these black characters, for these gay characters, for these people that made the system run, you know, all the players show how difficult it was for all of them to have the system run because by the end, by the time the credits roll on Hollywood and the movie Meg has won all the Academy Awards and, and the woman is running a studio kind of feels like, okay, sure. Don't get me wrong, Hollywood is a beautiful television show. You know, all in all, I enjoyed Hollywood, actually. I, I wouldn't lie, I actually enjoyed watching Hollywood. I enjoyed the journey to the end, even though at so many points I was like, mm. I know Ryan Murphy has two or three more years to his contract with Netflix, so he has other shows up his sleeve. I don't know if Hollywood will come back for a season two. I don't think the way it is, there's a need for a season two because all the story that needs to be told has been told in season one. We've already had a happy ending in season one. It's not like by the time season one ended, Camille Washington went for the auditions and she was shattered. Like she's the best for the role, but it went to the studio head's daughter because of course we'll go to the studio head's daughter and then the journey. So that was set up for season two. Every, all the story was told in season one. So I don't think there's a need for season two. I might be wrong. You know, maybe season two will be a whole new different cast. And a whole new different story still based on the golden era of hollywood and if that's what he's going to do i'd look forward to watch that because it'll be very much like american horror story and american crime story so that i would actually watch and that i'd actually like go for i'm done with my review on hollywood let me know if you've seen it did you enjoy watching it or you the inaccuracies with the plot just took it out so much that you didn't enjoy it as much as you thought you would me, I enjoyed watching every last minute of it. I like watching fancy people live fancy lives, okay? And I just like watching like dreams come true on screen. That's what like that's what movies are. When we say movies are magic, that's exactly what we mean by that. My name is Ifa Labi. Let me know your thoughts on Hollywood on Netflix. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.